Chris, uh, <coughs> thanks to the uh, Singapore Chinese Chambers and the SME uh, Center about this uh, webinar, organizing it. And uh, I do hope everybody's well and adjusting to the massive changes that's happening all around us. So let me, before I start, start my slide, um, I think um, the purpose of this whole sharing is also about the ESG, that's one part. But a lot of things that I'm going to start off with will be sharing what's happening on the online, perhaps from our per uh, perspective, on the things that is already happening within the online sphere. Anyway, I'm just let me introduce myself again. Uh, I'm Sam. Um, I'm the general manager in uh, Q10. It's um, 10 years in this business, and uh, I've seen the changes, and more importantly, how the shoppers and even the businesses have adapted over the years since uh, 10 years ago. So this has been quite an eye-opener for everybody. All right, so this COVID-19, I will probably call it the catalyst for change. In terms of the e-commerce, um, in this industry itself, the pace of change is already very, very fast. Or in the digital world, things have changed tremendously fast. I mean, we just have to just look back behind our shoulder and you can see that Grab and Uber and within that three to five years, the dominance that they have achieved in just a very short time frame. Now, this is what we are talking about, the pace, all right? Change is needed, but whether do we adapt and react is another story, all right? So I think this COVID-19 is probably the, the string, the jab that we all need all right, to change the way we work. All right, so the first slide, actually, it's um, an article that was published by Euromonitor in 2014, all right, that's six years ago. Then probably the data is about a year old, so that's about seven years old. Now, just a seven years old, you see the next few slides will be what's happening in 2019 and 2020. Now, but let's see in 2014, or where are we in the state of e-commerce? <clears throat> now, if you look at the Singapore, all right, Singapore at a time, it's about 7% online to offline sales. Now, China in reference here is about 10 to 11, about 10% um, online to offline, the exposure of, uh, you know, the, the online sales to the offline businesses. All right, so now let's see what, uh, what, what are the changes over the, the, the latest few years. All right, now we see in 2020, now this uh, article was published just this year. Now we see the China that I was talking about from what 10, 11%, today it's already 31, 34%. And that's even before the pre-COVID-19 situation. With this virus situation going on, I think it has definitely changed the whole landscape even more in China. Now, if you see, let's say Korea, Korea is about 21%. So I think if you break it down to say a retailer point of view, if it's 20%, probably one in five of your orders, you will get, uh, it comes from online channels. So it's probably going to take a lot of this weightage to your business as we move forward. All right, so it's just getting ready for this eventually because this eventuality is already real in the world outside. Okay, just some uh, light sharing. Okay, first, let's, let's take a look at this slide. Uh, it's again, uh, the latest one that I just got in. Now, this is what's the situation happening in US. Okay, this is the quarter one um, article or the items that's been flying off the shelf in US. So we see the number two is a what bread machine. The key to take note here is this um, 600 over percent change. So these are the top 100 items that went up or the categories that went up due to this COVID-19. You can see the change in people's lifestyle. They reacted accordingly. So people are working from home. Lockdown measures, they are looking at bread, and I just read the news, yeast is short, shortages in the retail in US, for example. And of course, you see the computer monitors, people want bigger monitor screens, things are working from home. 
we see the same thing here in Singapore too, except we don't see bread makers. <laughs> All right, I mean, we are, we are Asian, we don't really eat that much bread, but we see computer monitors, people upsizing the monitor screen. And of course, you see the weight training, people uh, are buying the gym equipment to stay at home to exercise and things like that. And then we see 59. Now, this is what, if you have kids at home, uh, you would probably need all these things to keep them occupied. Because I heard many stories from my colleagues that it's really a handful keeping their kids uh, occupied at home, finding activities for them. <clears throat> all right, so, and you see the IKEA situation, people queuing up. Well, you see 95, you see the office there. Probably people looking also at, you know, hey, I probably need a proper working workstation at home for my house since I'm working from home. So these are the changes that's already happening due to this virus, okay? All right, so the next one is actually what's happening during the COVID-19. In quarter one, the changes since January in Singapore, um, in terms of the search, online searches, what people are looking for. Now we see at the bottom right, the PS4, or the, under the gaming category. Now it is true, in all major online platforms, uh, whether is it our side or our competitor side, or even Carousel, people are looking for Nintendo Switches, PS4. So this is happening and they're also buying those game cartridges or game uh, for these gadgets. All right, so you can see like vitamin C, soap, medical supplies, hand sanitizers, electronics and TV. So, and you'll be surprised at this freezers Thing here also yes we also see a spike we also see people are reacting buying a lot of things not just the groceries not just the essentials they are moving into the the things that usually people don't buy online the big bulky items they still prefer that that touch the feel that retail therapy but today people are buying freezers all right for of course you want to stock up hot your food and everything yes you need things like that all right so online gave a lot of the shoppers in Singapore choices during this difficult time for everybody. Okay, so this uh, next slide, it's something interesting here because I, I've been looking at the patterns or the trends that has been happening when this COVID-19 started. All right, it's very raw, but I think it's, it shows a lot of things that we all can take away from. Now, the top table here, now this shows the, the traffic or the page view that's coming to our site, okay? I removed the numbers here because these are pretty confidential, all right? I just give you the trend. So when it first started on 29 January, hang on, Right, when it first started, right, when the first case was reported in Singapore, right, it was one and two, one of a day. All right, that's at the bottom table. You can see the corresponding case numbers in Singapore. Now, when it first started, we saw a huge spike in terms of the, the traffic to our site. People are hunting, they're searching, and this period is where, like, what I call the must. People are been surging online to buy the surgical mask for themselves, for their family, and things like that. Now, if you see the next phase here, the next block here, well, the, the cases went up, okay, three, four, and it sort of like tapered down to two, and there were days then were zero, okay? So on the top table, you see, okay, people breathe a sigh of relief, okay? So, well, it, it's good for us also because they, there was a lot of intense media scrutiny in terms of the mask, the prices and things like that, we, we do have a hard time trying to do the compliance and mitigation and clamping down on those, um, hot, I mean, those uh, errant sellers, mask sellers. Now in the third block here, now though there was a decline in terms of the cases that's happening in Singapore, you see the six, four and two, all right? But there was an anomaly here, people are still buying. Okay, but in this third block here, all right, we see a, a difference in terms of the spike. Though it's not a, a sudden spike, it was a gradual spike, but we see people moving into not just masks really, they move into other 
categories. They move into diapers. They move into infant milk formulas. They move into rice. Okay. Now they were preparing for I think the 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 siege mentality or the hoarders mentality. Really. Now as you can see, on the seven or eight, there was the infamous panic buying offline. Now it the, this online gave us this sense of probably I will call this the the fear factor of the Singaporeans, the Kiasu, the Kiasi kind of um, the, the, the feeling we can see online. Actually, we have a three to four days sort of like a prediction that certain things are going to happen kind of thing. So it's also very interesting for us to actually observe behind the scenes. Now, on the right, what I'm just sharing in terms of the platform wise, our site traffic has basically increased by 15% if you just compare the quarter 2020 versus last year's quarter 2019. And these numbers have increased by 15%. And that's even before we factor the drop in terms of overseas sales from uh, China sellers or the inbound parcels. That because of these measures in China and Wuhan and everything, um, yes, overseas sellers could not fulfill. And also, of course, due to other reasons like Air freight being uh, airline stopping all these uh, their yeah, flights and everything. Now the other one, the third days, uh, the three days before the circuit breaker measures. Now somehow Singaporeans have already had that feeling, or before that, then they're all searching online to buy the product. It surged by sixty five percent. I would probably say how high is high in reference? Well, I think it's just about maybe a notch. Uh, a notch below the 11.11, all right? It was that massive in terms of scale. All right, so now with the ESG or the government encouragement or some support packages that has been announced, um, marketplaces like us, so there are four marketplaces that retailers or business owners can consider for their business, all right? So it will be Q10, Shopee, Lazada, Amazon. So there are four platforms that retailers or business owner can choose. All right. Now there is of course a contentment here. Why don't the government support my website and things like that? All right. But if I'm going to say or share from my point of view, I think it's a lot more than just having a website. All right. The key here, do you have the, the buyers firstly, and you, you probably need to know where can I get the traffic? Okay. So, but anyway, let me explain what, what is Q10 or what is this e-marketplace all about. It is nothing but an online platform for buyers and sellers. All right, and today we have more than 3 million registered buyers. And in terms of the platform, once you join in as a seller, all right, we provide the payment gateway. That means all the service fee, MasterCard, Visa, GrabPay, and all these services is already factored into our platform fees itself. So we take care. But in terms of the choices for the payment gateways, if you can have a time, visit our platform, add something to your card and check out, you can see a whole spread of uh, payment options from net to everything. So everything is catered for, for every Singaporean uh, to make that purchase. All right, so, and the third, one will be the escrow function. Now versus um, your own platform, your own website, or versus say carousel. <clears throat> this function, this escrow function, it's, it means that we, the, we become the gatekeeper or we hold the money in trust. We hold the buyer's money in trust. Now if things go wrong, all right, buyers are assured or in a way, protected because there is an escrow partner that holds the money first before it's released to merchants. All right, so this enables the trust. And that's why a lot of shoppers feel safer to shop in Taobao or in, uh, in Q10 for their shopping needs because there is this escrow function versus carousel. A lot of times, a hey, meetup or whatever, if things go wrong, there's no mitigation, payment already done, there's nothing I can do. The box of iPhone is actually just a box with a stone. All right, so this things are uh, uh, one of the many reasons why marketplaces has been successful in their own right. Okay, now the last one for service fee. Now, 
In fact, all marketplaces, right, only take a cut based on success only. Now, if you don't sell anything, there is no monthly charges, there's no platform fees that you should be even talking about, all right? But if you look at what we have as a marketplace, we have a lot of registered buyers. A lot of people are just going to these kind of marketplaces to do their window shopping and things like that, okay? All right, so now let's identify the online shoppers for all your business, all these uh, business owners listening in. Now, remember your core audience today. 55% are women, okay? So like Chinese, it's one you understand it to your house. So in a way, yes, all right? Do remember women are most likely the decision maker. And I also noticed that women are also using their husband's credit card to do their shopping. All right, I mean, all of you guys will be smiling and I guess this is also true, okay? All right, remember, women, okay? Now, 60% of all transactions are done via mobile devices. That means a lot of Singaporeans are comfortable making payment with their mobile phone. So the implication to business owners or having their own website, please ensure that your website is mobile friendly. When I say mobile friendly, it means that your images, you know, looks good on the small screen, your text is good. It's, it's not just UX and UI, you know, a lot of simple fundamentals, you get it right, you have a chance to get the sales, all right? Now, majority of the shoppers here, at least in our platform, is between the 25 and 45. Oh, uh, that's the good thing, all right? Now, there are certain other platforms, of course, there are will be a, a lot of younger demographics because of their positioning wise, okay? But I think uh, since we are one of the, we are the first in Singapore to start this business, um, our users have probably grown with us actually for 10 years. So we have a lot of very sticky, very loyal customers. And of course we do receive a lot of feedback along the way. Lah. Don't need to tell me that. <laughs> All right, so now the average cut size, so of course will be of interest also. On average, a user be spending, each time they cut out, they'll be spending around 45 to $50. It has actually increased over the years. So today it's around 40 to 45 to $50. And I'm very, very sure about this number. In fact, this is one of the highest among all the other platforms in terms of the average cut amount, okay? Okay, yeah, many of you will have this question on their mind. Okay, how much do Q10 charge or what's the service fee or platform fees? So this table will answer all the questions here. All right, so when you first join uh, our platform as a seller, you start off as a, a standard seller, or we call it a new seller, all right? So for this is a 12%, 11%, 10%, 9%. Now, what does this percentage mean? That means, for example, the 12%, it will be based on a transacted amount, all right? If I mean, for transactional for transaction amount of two hundred dollars or less, Q10 will charge twelve percent. Okay, so of course we do wish that uh, our sellers does good sales and they get promoted to good or power. Okay. All right. So in our platform, what are benefits to the shoppers? We do issue card coupons or discount coupons that shoppers can grab and use it to get discount off their total cart. That means they can add items from shop A, shop B, the two different business owner, and they can enjoy an overall discount in their purchases. So we're talking about minimum 10% to maybe 20%, depending on the kind of uh, coupons that we issue. And just bear in mind that this card coupon is at the platform expense, all right? Not merchants end, not sellers end, but at the platform end. That means this is expense is based, it's, it's on us, okay? All right, so now what does this uh, joining such a marketplace, whether is it us or the other three platform, what does it mean? All right, in short, actually. Now, it means that you own your own shop, 
you manage your own shop assets, just like your own retail store. You have a shop front, you have a signboard, things like that. All right, the items that you place inside your shop, your online shop too, same thing. You have full control, you can do your pricing and things like that. All right, okay, and just like your own retail store, you can also conduct your own promotion to drive traffic and sales. And the promotion could be at a store wide level or at a individual item level. All right, so, and then in terms of the in our platform, what's unique here is that we don't prescribe a fixed solution in terms of logistics. So retailers, business owners, you are free to determine what suits you the best. Now, if you want, store pickup, yeah, okay, great, okay? You don't have the manpower to do the pick and pack and handle all the whatever, parcel, carton boxes and things like that. Yes, you can do that. But not for this time, all right? During this, uh, lockdown or this circuit breaker measures, uh, a lot of businesses are not allowed to do it, all right, unless they get an exemption from uh, ESG, okay? Now, if you don't have, if you're considering, let's say, delivery companies, you can use Q-Express, all right? Q-Express is a wholly owned uh, subsidiary under our company, it's a logistic company, all right? They can avail to help you to do with your last mile solution. And of course, if you have your own fleet, you can also request um, to our platform, all right, that, hey, I'd like to do my own delivery, okay? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> For those who are new to e-commerce, I mean, I'm just sharing the basic equation traffic time conversion rate equals to sales. Um, traffic probably from your own website, you'll be looking at Facebook, Google, paid ads and things like that. Now the conversion does matter, but it's hard to get a grasp on what actually this uh, conversion rate is. It's not just about price, all right? It could be sometimes be about the images that's being used, the whether it's clear enough and things like that, all right? So just bear in mind this simple thing. If you own your own, web, own website, you, you have this issue here, all right? Okay. All right, so just some tips if you join the marketplace, all right? So in marketplaces, they do have like a follower, like a fan club. So shoppers can follow your shop, right? In this example, we have this particular shop that has about what, 27,000 followers that is following this particular shop in, uh, in our platform. So basically, it's like a database for this seller, and this seller can actually also send messages to their followers, like a private sale and things like that, okay? And if you see here, then this shop can also do, uh, can, it's also issuing like a shop coupon. So this coupon is a store-wide kind of condition. You can set a condition. In this case, it's $12. Minimum purchase, $100, okay? So you can set the validity and things like that. So you are the shop owner. So you can actually decide how you want to conduct your business online. All right, so like in terms of conversion rate, yeah, we also notice those have that those shops that has more followers and those that have numerous reviews enjoy better sales. So this is the example of the reviews. So like this uh, cases, they have 23,000 uh, reviews, all right? And better than the normal reviews, there's only text-based, there's also photo reviews. And this one, that's 6,400 photo reviews, okay? All right, this is just another example of, say, a photo review. And this particular seller actually conducted the, like, a mini review contest, all right, before and after kind of thing, okay? Okay, now, in general, for <clears throat> online, there is this uh, three-second rules that we apply. Um, if this image doesn't capture attention in three seconds, I can just say it's goodbye. So anyway, this, I would love to use this image because this is, I don't know whether you can guess this, this is just dried sea cucumber. Okay, it's, it really looks disgusting. <coughs> okay, so now the next tip, all right, be your own website huh? or you join any other platforms, right? Now create hero images, okay? Now previously, all of, many people were talking, I want clear white background, you know, they, 
the Amazon style. But hey, take a look. Even FairPrice website today, all right, they have adjusted their thumbnail, all right, especially this bottom left one, this union lever template, or we call it the hero images, whereby it's not like the pack shot here, that's a clear white background, because online you cannot see the size. Nobody can see how big this bottle is. So the bottom image here, well, it just clearly just tells you this is a shampoo. You might not know this brand, but I'm telling you this is a shampoo and how big or small it is. <clears throat> All right. So, and the other two are just examples <clears throat> from other merchants, how they create their own hero images. It's just that three second rule. It, it grabs, you know, grab people's attention, linger, stay longer with me. I have a higher chance to get the sales. All right, so just summarize uh, the things that uh, you need in terms of uh, when you start your business online. Go for the acquisition. Aggressive acquisition, maybe that's the missing word is aggressive. Check out the traffic as much as possible. I mean, be your website or be your marketplace, but marketplace will probably be more efficient because you can get as much traffic with almost zero cost because people are searching um, in our platforms, right? Say must, and in the search, re search results, your items can be there at no cost at all, all right? So I then try to seek out the followers and try to get as many reviews as possible. Now, the bottom one, it's just a footnote. The trend in all this online platform usually follow a pattern, all right? Before you become a successful seller or a shop or a store, the initial phase is generally, we go for the quick win like item level. Yes, somebody don't, some people, most people don't like it. They call price card or deep discount, but it's just the very first activation point, right? To tilt the balance in your favor, all right? So it's always from the item level and gradually as you become more and more successful, you become a store level. Once you're at a store level, it's a bigger level now. It's at a higher level whereby, hey, price are not that important. Shoppers knows you, they know how's your quality, they know your delivery standard, your packing, I trust you, all right? It's a phase that almost everybody has to go through. So we also notice that it always starts from the item level, it goes to the shop level. Once you can reach that shop level kind of stability, you don't really need to talk about price, okay? All right, so just let me move into sharing the ESG, uh, this uh, support package that was announced. Now this uh, online package is called the Singapore E-Commerce Program. Now it's part of the Enterprise Singapore E-Commerce Booster Package. All right, so I've put in the details below in the slide here. If you'd like to have more information, you can visit this URL. It's uh, www.qoo10.sg slash retailers, or just email us, retailers with the S at q10.com. All right, we have a team of our colleagues who will be looking into uh, all the emails and the applicants. Okay, so this is uh, the next slide is uh, just to share the broad or the most important thing here. All right, which I have actually highlighted here. Now, eligible local retailers will receive a one-time support to defray 90, I say again, 90% of eligible cost of up to $9,000 for six months. Now, I think this is the first time I've seen such an aggressive and generous support given by the government. I would dare say this becomes like a no-brainer for any businesses to partake into this digital or the e-commerce with the marketplaces now, all right? Okay, of course, the first thing on many people's mind will be the eligibility. Now, the basic, uh, like all ESG grant, the basics are there. First, you have to be a business entity, all right, that is registered in Singapore, have a minimum 30% local shareholding, and the turnover, annual turnover not exceeding $100 million, or not exceeding 200 employees. This should probably cover almost 90% of our enterprises here in Singapore. All right, so just take note here, I just highlighted the, maybe the key things that uh, confuse a lot of people. Retailers or business owner can only choose one, okay? Only can choose one from four 
participating platforms. Okay. Now here, probably the first, the, the one of the FAQ will be, hey, I have already a shop in Lazada. It's existing. Can I use this grant to apply for the other three? Say Q10 or Amazon. The answer is yes. Okay. So if you are in Lazada and you're not in other three platform, use this grant. Okay. Now the second bullet here I put at the bottom. Um, priority will be given to businesses that has four seven in their first two digit in the Accra SSIC. So if you look at your Accra BIS file under the principal activities, you should see a four seven. All right, so priority will be given to businesses that it's four seven. Okay, so why is four seven? So it's under the wholesale and retail trade. That's four six and four seven. All right. So ESG has told us, hey, um, priority be given to four seven. Now, but if there are applicants that falls out of this four seven, do apply. All right. We will escalate this to ESG for the case by case basis. In in fact, I think in general so far they are pretty generous. Okay. So no harm trying. Okay. Even though you don't fall under the four six and four seven, because they do know that this uh SS yes. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm sharing with you. All right. Okay, I'm sharing with you the starter kit here. All right, so the starter kit here, A, what do you get for that $300? Now, the $300 is the net. After everything, for retailers, you only pay $300. All right, the original value for this starter kit A is $3,000. Now, what do you get? You get the one-time registration waiver. That's $100 value. We will waive it for any applicant. And there will be a content production support here. We will include photo taking. There'll be some web design or in terms of designing this for the web. And we'll be uploading the listing for you. All right. So it is up to 50 SKUs. And then you'll have a dedicated account manager that will be assisting you for the next six months to help you build and grow your business with us. And we will also be giving you $500 worth of marketing credits that you can use to build and grow your business again. Now, in our platform, sellers can actually do all the promotion on their own. So be it, if you want to book the homepage of Q10, go ahead. Or if you like to do keyword bidding, be for the word must, for example. All right, go ahead. Because we believe sellers should have the autonomy to control their business future in our platform. We cannot take the position of being the god or the policeman that says who should survive or who should not survive. So it's a very open platform that we believe. And that's why we don't prescribe any fixed solution at all. Okay. So sellers can actually, if they want, at different phases of their growth, Okay, they do keyword bidding. If I'm a digital seller, I will do keyword bidding. That's very effective, right? If I want to do some branding, I'll book the homepage. Now, what are the prices like? All right, for homepage, 24 hours, it costs you $500. That's the big rectangle banner on the main page itself. This is more for branding, but do let our account manager just advise you as we move forward from here. But let's say keyword bidding, it starts from $1 per keyword. And if you win it, you get displayed in the search result, top search result for 24 hours. So there's a whole full spread. It's not just keyword and there's a lot more um, promotional tools that you can consider. And you have already $500 tuition fee that you can use uh, for yourself to grow your business. All right. So all this for $300. Okay. And the starter kit B, now this is just an additional $100 more. The only difference is that there will be up to 100 SKUs photo taking in this package. Okay. Now, 
like I said, we are, we believe in open kind of platform. All right. So all these things that you see the next three slides, this is on the a la carte basis and it's stackable. It means that, Hey, I don't like this. I can choose the other one. I can buy more of this if I want. Okay. So you can take two times starter kit A if you think you want to. All right. So we really let the business owner decide what they need, consume only what they need. Okay. So you see the trend of fire again, I say again, this is net basis for retailers or those who are interested to take up or to apply for this, these packages, it's a net basis. You only pay $300. The 90%, you don't have to worry. This has been settled between us and the ESG. Okay. All right. So the next one, you might have a business that say, Hey, I have my digital assets. I already have my photos. I have everything, the write up and everything. I don't need all this. Okay. I just need marketing support. So now here for this, you can just avail this. This is $2,000, right? But you or the applicant only pay $200. What do you get? You get $2,000 worth of marketing credits. Okay. It doesn't expire. All right. Just it doesn't expire. There's no like uh, expiry date. So this marketing dollars stays with you. All right. For you to determine when and how you should spend it. All right. So now if you talk about, is it logical $2,000? Is it a lot? Mind you, if you talk about the online marketing part of things, I think you just need to check with many of even your friends in the property line, you know, as an OMO, they probably easily be spending a thousand, two thousand dollars a month just to do their own online marketing. So in terms of the business sense of it, online marketing becomes a little bit expensive if you look at the way it is. Okay. But I, if I can also share with you Google and Facebook, the cost of things like that, if you advertise in the marketplace, it's definitely cheaper. It's about at least five times cheaper. Okay. So this is for you to explore with the various platform. I'm just sharing the things that are uh, uh, the packages that's available for people who want to sign up. Okay. And of course, there's a subset here, the optional part. Okay. I have some photos, but I need just a few, maybe up to 10 SKUs, photo taking and design and support. Right, so you can use this two thousand dollars to avail this, uh, you know, small um, requirement to take photos of my products. Okay. All right, the last one. So, for example, you're a business owner. Okay, I have my photos. I do not need it. I do not need marketing, but I just need logistic support. All right. Now, if you look at this. Thing here, you call it the shipping and fulfillment. All right, the net basis, what you pay, it's only fifty dollars. What you get, you get five hundred dollars. Q Express shipping credits. Okay, so basically you get five hundred dollars worth of credits in Q Express account. You can use it to to offset your actual delivery charges. So every time you use the Q Express to do the pickup and the delivery, the next day delivery it can be like three point nine nine. You can use this five hundred dollars to offset the three dollars ninety nine cents. Okay, so for five hundred dollars, the net basis you only pay fifty dollars. All right. So as we, as at the in the early earlier two slides, okay, like all this, remember this is all a la carte basis. Just consume what you think best fits your business needs. You need not take all. Okay. But if you really want to max out, you can take up up to, you know, 10,000 worth of the value and the ESG will support 90%. Basically just take up to $1,000 net basis. All right. So you choose to really want to max out this support, take up to $1,000 on in terms of net basis for yourself. Okay. All right. This is the last slide I have for everybody. All right. So for those who are interested, can just email us, retailers with the S at kitten.com. Now do include the referral code SME Center S Triple C I in your email to us. Uh, we will, I mean, my colleagues are the one that will be looking into it, but I would like to take better care um, for the applicants that comes from uh, S Triple C I. All right. So at least on the other hand, I also can update 
the SME centers and uh, provide maybe direct support to those applicants. Okay. All right, so let's move on to the uh, Q&A. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for the insightful uh, sharing uh, about the platform. I believe that we have uh, quite a number of questions here uh, in the Q&A session. So uh, why don't we just take it up? So I think uh, one of the questions over here, which uh, I myself, I'm actually quite interested to know as well, right? Is there's a question on uh, uh, what is the 3K account management fee covers? Because uh, there's another question that's linked, right? Is that uh, there are recently so many so-called trainers uh, teaching people how to sell on Q10. So uh, is this some way this account management thing uh, helping to address these uh, trainers on how to sell on Q10 actually? Okay, so this, um, I think, first let me address the selling online. I think you're here, you've seen a lot of online ads, you know, how to sell online in those various platforms. Uh, those are not officially sanctioned by any of our platforms. All right, so a lot of them are not the bona fide so-called um, representative from each of our platform. Now, in terms of what our staff will do, our account manager will be guiding um, the sellers, especially the new ones, on the dashboard. So they'll be covering training on how to use the back end. It is a, actually a very complicated, not friendly um, dashboard, I would say, because it's very, a lot of functions in it, all right? So our account manager will guide you through how to use the back end, basically how to upload in the future, for example, how to manage your order fulfillment, how to answer the Q&A and things like that. Now, that is the basic. Now, moving forward, once it's ready, of course, our account manager will be also giving you advice on, hey, um, Mr. So-and-so, we're going to say, I want to grow your business. Uh, we have a promotion for coming up or things like that. Or you, would you like to consider, based on the category of product that you have, um, we're going to try keyword leading, for example. Then to go through the analytics, guide you through what was the traffic, what was the add to cart rate, and you can actually decipher and understand your business on what's more effective uh, for your business. Thank you. Okay, so uh, there's another one. I think uh, I think this 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 question may, may actually pop up. I think just now you address it, uh, but I think there's another participant who asked. So they're saying if they are already on Q10, right? Can they actually apply for the a la carte service? Because just now uh, we mentioned EHG said if you are actually on that platform, right? You cannot actually uh, so called use the grant on the platform you are already on. So probably you can just clarify this, please. Okay, I expected this question to come about, yes, um, many existing Q10 sellers have asked us. Yes, it's a good deal, right? It's a good deal, right? Honestly, even I, I feel like selling now, right? So the answer, correct answer is no. Okay, get my answer, yeah. Okay, so, uh, okay, there's, I, I think there's a lot of questions over here that we are not probably able to answer over here through the webinar. So I think probably we can take it offline, then we will provide a, a, a we will actually work together to see how we can answer them and actually share with the participants. But I just want to end off with, with, with uh, one question from my side. Because I think for e-commerce, right, we can see something like, like Q10, you are operating something like a shopping mall. But this time round, this shopping mall is different. Government is actually pumping a lot of resources, right? Like, Wow, giving you free uh, grants for delivery, marketing fees, and everything. So, uh, um, should 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 the retailers actually take this opportunity to jump on board this uh, this 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 e-commerce platform now? Actually, I think it is the best time actually for everybody. Now, for those retailers who are affected by the circuit breaker measure, that means they cannot open their shop, for example. Um, in terms of the onboarding process, we have try to make it as electronic as possible. So for those who apply and got approved, the photo taking is actually quite seamless. I mean, all you need to do is just have access to your store, your, your stocks, right? Pack them up in the carton boxes. Um, there will be a delivery guy who come and pick up all those items and bring back to the studio. It's a remote photo shooting. So they bring back to the studio, upload into cloud, and everything will be activated from there. So it's not physical photo taking at your place, just pack them to carton boxes and we activate the whole onboarding process uh, from here. So we understand the difficulty during this period. But in terms of the timing wise, all retailers just 
have a go. Come on, three hundred dollars. Come on, all right. So it's really one of the best chance that you can try. There's no monthly rental, all right. And the shop stays forever with you. You have no right to even close your business. Actually, you can exit by yourself. You can close your own shop if you want. But it's it's almost forever, all right. So build that business and take this chance uh, with the government support. I don't see any other better chance anymore from here. Thank you, Sam. Uh, okay, uh, I think someone just sent me another question offline, so I'll probably just ask it over here. Uh, given the COVID nineteen situations, right, it seems that uh, e commerce has always been uh, thought of as the red ocean, right? But it doesn't seem to apply here because I think uh, it seems like whoever has stocks, right, will dominate. Just like you know, in the market uh, previously for the past few months, there's no mask, no hand hand sanitizer. Suddenly, we are seeing now a lot of uh, different brands of masks and sanitizer coming in. So, uh, uh, what's your take on this phenomenon, and how do you think that you know, given that stock is limited, is actually a good time to bring new brands or new products over? Your thoughts? For the masks, in fact, I have a big phobia. <laughs> the thing, you know, the MPI writing to us, uh, it was a nightmare actually. But I, I, I think if you see from your angle, hey, those have stock. But we also have very smart, um, agile sellers that is selling, and even they run out of stock, they put it on pre-order. We have to clamp down on these people. All right. So in in the marketplace, there is a compliant team. Firstly, all right, it goes after, say, contraband or things that's not allowed. We try as much as possible. We have multi layers of checks, right? from many keywords to compliance, HSA uh, advisory notices and things like that. Yes, people are dumping. It can happen, but it's already happening. Not just here, it's everywhere. But in the long run, now there is a review, peer review kind of system. This thing cannot last, all right? If the product is it's, it's lousy, all they need to do, the shoppers just need to do is just flag it out it goes up to our platform customer service, we will shut them down. That quick win cannot last. If it's something so cheap, too good to be true, I suggest it is really not true. And the money to be gained from, from doing such a, as a seller to do this kind of business is not going to be sustainable because we can block your payment. Like we sell the three ply mask and sell it, no, a one ply, single ply mask, sell it as three ply. We can just block your payment. There's nothing to gain. We can just refund any shoppers. So there's, there's still that little market forces that we try to balance it out as much as possible. All right. Thank you, Sam. Uh, I think we've come to the end of today's session. It's glad that I think with the last questions, right? I think uh, uh, thanks for addressing and actually giving assurance to both the buyers and sellers that there's actually a, a level of governance there to actually make sure that uh, things are operating uh, properly within the marketplace. So I think uh, with that, uh, thank you once again for 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 having uh, for joining us for today's session and all the participants. We hope you actually enjoy the session we have today. So uh, with that, I think I'll be working with uh, uh, Sam to actually uh, to consolidate the slides and actually send out to everyone at the end uh, of the session. So uh, for the questions that's not answered, we will actually answer them offline and we will actually uh, share those uh, answers right to all the participants as well. So uh, without further ado, uh, thank you all for coming again. So we hope to see you in the few, next few series. Uh, Sam, any last words to the, uh, to the members and uh, businesses? Yes, actually, I, I, I saw one question here. Uh, hmm. Why not include Taobao or Jingdong, those popular platforms? I mean, it, it's a fact, all right? Um, yes, Taobao, I mean, especially Taobao, it's very popular. Even I myself, I do check it out, all right? The prices, Singapore retailers cannot be, all right? Most of the time, it's a gone case. Now, that's scary by itself. So for this, if you're talking about a Singapore retailer, the Singapore government, as a Singapore shopper, I think we should as much as possible stay united and, you know, support our own businesses. Because first, we are a local company, local shop. We have the local reputation. If anything goes wrong, we know who to find. All right, it's a Singapore business. All right, yeah, this ESG, I think it's just best to support our local platforms or local sellers, firstly, the local businesses, firstly. All right, I, I think that's all I can probably say. And uh, apologize, this is my first webinar. Um, new to me, uh, 
for the hiccup and the nervousness that you hear in my voice, um, it'd be much better. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Okay, we are signing off now. So look forward to seeing everyone for the next webinar. In fact, I think if you're interested in Taobao or Jingdong, right, tomorrow we actually have a session on uh, multi uh, cross-border multi-e-commerce. So uh, look forward to seeing everyone there as well. Uh, so offline, please contact Sam uh, to check out more about, about the Q10 marketplace. Thank you, guys. See you. Bye-bye.